생계를 위해서 이 해녀를 생택했지. 옛날에는 이제 또 먹을 것이 없으니까 생계를 이제 선택하려고 이제 해녀를 배웠지. In the South Korean island province of Jeju, there are female divers known as Hanyu, who have been diving for hundreds of years, harvesting seafood to support their families. These women dive using no breathing equipment, holding their breath for minutes at a time, scanning the ocean floor for valuable sea creatures. But today, it is a dying way of life. Um, 자기가 버, 발로 걸어지고 움직일 있는 한까지는 지금 물질도 하고. In Italia il mestiere era fatto con pezzi di forbice. Facile dire quando era, si alzava il cappello e si bruciava le punte. Bruciando le punte il capello si evolve e chiudendosi diventa grosso, diventa più forte e non cade più. Molta gente perde i capelli perché i barbieri non sanno tagliare i capelli e bruciare le punte. Questo è molto importante. Qui siamo all'antica barberia Colla, la prima barberia di Milano. È una barberia tradizionale. Come un contadino sa arare la terra, un sarto conosce la stoffa. Una volta si facevano i capelli, questo è molto importante. E faccio il parrucchiere da quando avevo nove anni. Da nove anni adesso che ne ho 82, sono 73 anni che faccio il barbiere. Una volta il barbiere era una cosa molto importante. Ora è molto diverso, il barbiere non esiste più, ho vissuto un mondo diverso, il nostro mestiere è... bisogna farlo bene, farlo bene vuol dire essere bravi, voi avete i capelli, non fateli tagliare male. <ride> To the north and west of Ireland's County Donegal is windswept Tory Island, surrounded by the hungry waves of the Atlantic. Less than 200 people live here, including Ireland's last and only king, a tradition that goes back 1,400 years. Uh, my name is Patsy Dan Rogers, the king of Tory, as they say, and uh, you're very welcome to Tory Island. As king of the island, Patsy's role is mostly symbolic. In the 6th century, a visiting saint created the role in order to unify the islanders in defense of pirates. But Patsy is very proud of his island's rich heritage. We have our own Gaelic language. Everyone speaks Gaelic on the island. We have a, a very strong culture, musicians. Patsy's duties as king are few, but he takes his role as island ambassador very seriously. 
People come from various parts of the world, from a number of countries, to meet me and to see me on the island and to talk to me. When I accepted the simple uh, honour of the King, I thought it would never come to what it did come to now. Uh, it's quite serious now. Of the roughly 150 people who live on Tory Island, many are over 65 years old, and the island struggles for tourism and help from the mainland. I'm over 70, many are over 70, and the island is not going to really depend on, on, on uh, that type of age, you know, as much as we'd like to. They would like to see now the population of the island uh, growing and also a few jobs to teenagers and the island to start swinging again. Patsy may be the only Irish king, but his hope is that he won't be the last. There were five of us. When I'm on my dying bed, or hopefully before that, somebody will come up and uh, offer to take the honor of the king on the island. Yes, Danny, go, Danny. Ah, uh, I'm telling you, I feel sorry if I have to retire. You know why? I have uh, so many customers that say, Alex, you never retire. <laughs> I say, no, one day I have to retire, you know? My name is Alex Carosa, and I fix accordion since 1960 in New York. The people come from all over the world to fix the accordion because they say that I'm the best, I don't know. <laughs> this sometimes breaks, you have to change. Very difficult. I'm the only one in New York that fix the accordion at this moment, you know. See, I fix the accordion and I lose the customer because I fix the accordion correctly. <laughs> Honest. I have this one for example, take a look. This is a very old accordion. Ooh, at least this accordion is 75 years old. How old are you? Ah, if I tell you, you won't believe it. I'm 88. You believe it? <laughs> I swear. How old is him? If I tell you 93, you won't believe it. We're working together 60 years. Since 1949. <laughs> yesterday, yeah? Yeah, it looks like a yesterday, right? Uh, you gotta understand, an instrument is like a some part of your life. You, you care for the instrument more than anything else. I love this more than anything else. It's not the money sometime in, in life. If you're healthy and happy, money doesn't count. This is what I believe, maybe <laughs> I'm wrong, but now you have all my secret. <laughs> it's good. Then <laughs> Okay. Sudan, Najin, Fatu. These are the last three northern white rhinos left in the world. They're here at Old Pejida Conservancy in Kenya. Efforts by the staff and veterinarians are the last chance to keep these rhinos from going extinct completely. My name is Dr. Stephen Ngulu. I work at Olpegeta Conservancy as the wildlife veterinarian. Poachers have been the main cause of the loss of this subspecies. There's huge demand for rhino horn and rhino products. If there wasn't demand for rhino horn, there wouldn't be poaching. It's like the war against terrorism. It's a very dangerous kind of situation. The northern white rhinos were brought to the conservancy in 2009 from a zoo in the Czech Republic. Even though they live on the conservancy, they're still at risk from poachers. To keep the rhinos safe, they're watched around the clock. My name is Zachary Mutai. I work for Old Pichetta Conservancy as northern white rhino aid keeper. I do love ultra wild animals, but my favorite one is our rhino. It's my passion. I know when they're happy, when they're nervous and everything. Sudan is the last male of the northern white rhino. 
Here is my favorite friend. He's the most gentle. The keepers are keenly aware that the rhinos have been brought here to live out their last days. So far, breeding efforts have been unsuccessful. And though the chances are slim, around 30%, the last hope they have is to try in vitro fertilization. If IVF succeed, then they will not get extinct. We might be lucky, we might be unsuccessful. But we are trying all means to see if we can save them. <laughs>